so welcome to the 12 days of vlogmas and if you are new to my channel welcome my name is Haley, and i have mitochondrial disease and i have several chronic illnesses alongside with it and as you can tell by the title of today's video i'm going to be answering some of the most commonly asked questions about mitochondrial disease and about having mitochondrial disease i have a pretty good compiled list of questions and these questions some of them are questions I've been asked throughout my life and other of the other questions are some of the most commonly googled questions. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into it but before I do I want to give a little background context of me. So um, like I said my name is Haley. I will be 21 in March and I was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease when I was five years old. It's genetic in my case, it's something that I've dealt with since I was born. I've been in and out of hospitals and doctors my entire life. And as I go through these questions, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about my journey, but I do have other videos pertaining to my journey as a whole with my dough. So I'm just going to hop right in. And the first question, which if you're on this video, you probably already know what mitochondrial disease is but I'm going to share anyways what exactly it is. So what is mitochondrial disease? Mitochondrial disease is a genetic condition in which the mitochondria in the cells around the body does not produce enough energy. In turn, there's dysfunction, and because of this dysfunction, there's so many different things that can go wrong in someone's body if they have mitochondrial disease. And kind of taking it back to biology, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and it accounts for 90% of all body functions. So you can imagine when it's not functioning properly, when there's not enough of it, so many different things can go wrong because your body does not have the sufficient energy to do everything properly and to keep you stable and healthy and safe. So that's just a very like easy way I explain it to people. And I also like to use an anecdote such as this one. So if you picture a cell phone at 15%, no matter how much you charge it, whether you put it in rice, you take it to a thousand different repair people, it just won't go past that 15%. And when it's being used, it goes down and you're able to charge it, but only back up to 15%. That's my body. That's everyone's body with mitochondrial disease. A mitochondrial disease can affect you mildly or can affect you severely and I am definitely if there was like a space between moderate and severe that's where I would be definitely not moderate but definitely not severe so that's what mitochondrial disease is feel free to use this explanation when you're sharing with other people if it comes up just share about my dough if you can the next question is what is the life expectancy of someone with mitochondrial disease so this answer varies. It really depends on the form of mitochondrial disease you have. There are so, so, so many different forms of mitochondrial disease. It's quite insane. If you Google like a list of mitochondrial diseases, it's, it's crazy how, how many there are out there. So there are some specific mitochondrial disorders where historically there is a very known time or life expectancy but then there's other mitochondrial disorders where there's no life expectancy and what I mean by that is there's no specific age that is estimated you know for you to like live until then. So the form of mitochondrial disease that I have is actually one that has not been discovered in the entire world besides me and my mother. Um, but for me, I don't have a life expectancy and this is how I kind of, this is how I think of it. Do I have a higher likelihood of dying younger than the average population? 100%, my body does not function correctly. But also, I could die tomorrow in a car accident. I could live until I'm 102 out of spite. You just never truly know. And it's 
It's hard not to go down that rabbit hole, especially in the beginning if you're just diagnosed or looking for a diagnosis. It's really hard to not go down that rabbit hole, but my advice to you would be do not go down that rabbit hole if you can help it because it varies so much. And even if there's a set life expectancy, it's it's not guaranteed. Um, there's been plenty of cases where people have lived much longer or passed much younger. It's really just a mixed bag and it sucks, but that's the answer to that. So the next one is, is mitochondrial disease real? Yes, it is. It's mito terminal or fatal. It can be. Like I said, it really depends, but it, it can be. In a lot of cases it is. Um, is mitochondrial disease genetic? Genetic. Yes, it is. Who diagnoses mitochondrial disease? So a geneticist or a mitochondrial disease specialist. So the doctor who diagnosed me when I was five, he's a mito specialist. And the next question is, is how is mitochondrial disease inherited? So there's three different ways it can be inherited. And for several years, I thought it was just one way, but that is not the case. There are three different ways to inherit mito. So the first way is through mitochondrial DNA, which means from your mother. I know it's a little bit confusing when I say that, when mitochondrial disease, Mitochondrial is the name of the condition, but I'm just gonna explain it to you. So kind of going back to biology again, when you are a baby and you are born, you have mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is strictly 100% just from your mother. Nuclear DNA is mom and dad. Their DNA mixed. So, if you inherit mitochondrial disease like I do, then you get it specifically just from your mother, which means if I were to have a child, whether that would be a boy or a girl, they would have mitochondrial disease. The boy would not be able to pass it down, but the girl would because it's in her mitochondrial DNA. So that's the way I inherited mine. Moving on to the nuclear DNA, this one, if there's just the perfect um, perfect storm of genetics with both your mom and dad, boom, you can inherit it from the nuclear DNA. And the third way, which I haven't heard that many stories about, is just a very random, like snap of a finger, came out of nowhere, not like, it's not in their family, it's not in their family's like DNA or genetics, it's just, it's a really chance thing that happens. So those are three ways you can inherit Mito. So, yeah. Next question, which I hate answering this because it just sucks when I answer it. And that question is, is mitochondrial disease curable? And unfortunately, it is not. There is no cure on the market for any specific mitochondrial disease. There are treatments, there are IV infusions, there are supplements, there are medications, um, there are supplemental nutrition such as TPN or two feeds to help those whose GI is affected, such as me. But truly, there's no cure. There's only things to help lessen the intensity of symptoms and to help you have more quality in life but there's no cure and it really sucks because there's so many, so many people dying from mitochondrial disease all the time and it just sucks. Can mitochondrial disease start at any age? So the presentation of symptoms can start at any age, but the actual disease condition itself is, has been there since you were born. There's a, just a lot that can trigger mitochondrial disease to come to the surface and all of those symptoms to come to the surface. So in terms of me, my mito is always triggered by being sick. 
Um, that's really the biggest thing that's been a really bad thing for my mito. So sickness is a really common trigger for people to start experiencing symptoms of mito and realizing there's something going on. It's really common for mito patients to be fatigued and not be able to keep up with their peers and physically have issues. But there are a lot of stories where until there's other symptoms happening, they really realize, hmm, this really isn't normal. So it's normal for mito patients to be used to that fatigue and that exhaustion, but say they get sick and then all of these symptoms start and they just don't stop. Hopefully I'm making it not too confusing. There are so many different things that can trigger it. Sickness can trigger it. Major stress, that's a huge trigger. Stress in general. Um, sometimes some medications can actually bring it out. Just for whatever reason, your body doesn't like the medication. So it's like, hey, I'm here. I'm mitochondrial disease, ready to take over your life. So there's so many different variables and sometimes it just happens and there's no reason. But like I said, the presentation of symptoms can start at any age, but the actual condition itself is always there and has always been there. So I am actually almost nearing the end of the list. And one of the last questions is, is what are mitochondrial disease symptoms like in adults? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is it varies a lot. So there's a lot of symptoms though that are pretty common so i'm going to share some of my symptoms as an adult now it's so weird to say i'm an adult even though i'm almost 21. um <laughs> so some of my symptoms are fatigue muscle weakness low muscle tone um let's see i have a lot of gi issues i have pancreas issues um why am i drawing a blank Okay, I pulled up a list because I literally can't remember my own symptoms. In my defense, there are a lot of symptoms. I can't remember them all at one time. <laughs> so along with those symptoms I already spoke about, uh, I deal with, also deal with exercise intolerance. I dealt with ataxia, which is poor gait. Um, I have a math learning disability. Um, I have a heart defect, which is harmless at this point in time but I have to get it monitored every year. And one of the biggest things I struggle with is autonomic, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, which not everybody deals with, but a lot of people do with Mido, including me. You can search that up. Um, it's dysautonomia. And there's so, honestly, so many different symptoms that it's kind of hard to lump them all, but those are just some of the hallmark symptoms I've had and I know other adults have had with Mido. So that actually wraps up this video and concludes these questions, but there are so many other questions out there. So let me know if you want me to do a part two. If you have any specific questions, comment them below or private message me on Instagram at the Mito Warrior. Let me know, ask me anything. There's nothing that you can ask that I won't answer um, within reason, of course. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.